Hey folks, welcome back to West Virginia Cryptids and Strange Encounters. Today I'm out with my son Mason. We're just out, we've done a little bit of fishing. Um, just hanging out at a little local primitive campground for a little bit. He's in a hammock over here swinging back and forth. Just enjoying the, or the afternoon here in uh, Marion County, West Virginia. But I just want to touch on something that happened last week. Uh, I want to put a short video out about it. Um, there was a post made in... A group in, in Pennsylvania, uh, so, some lady posted some, uh, I guess you'd say footprints, tracks. Uh, they were muddy footprints on a roadway, long uh, trackway. And there were several people commenting that they, uh, they were Bigfoot. And there was others that were commenting that the lady hoaxed them and this and that and, and all kind of, all kind of stuff. I, I did. I was tagged in a post, or the owner of the uh, page uh, is friend. I'm friends with, and she tagged me in a post, and I was asked to go look at them. You know, you know when I could. So I, I agreed, and I ended up going last Wednesday. And I think the post was made on Saturday, so that would have been a week ago, a little over a week ago. And I went. I went on Wednesday, and my my first impressions before seeing the tracks. Um, I, I knew what they were. I, I knew what they were and weren't they, what they weren't. But on uh, Tuesday, I believe it was, or no, sorry, Monday, uh, I knew there was rain coming. So I contacted a friend of mine in that area. He went out, took some more pictures, uh, took a small video of the surrounding area because people were like, where, where did this mud come from? Why, why did the tracks get, um, well, they started out kind of light and got, and got heavier. I guess you say the the, uh, the actual print on the road, and again I had my theory as why that was. So right now I'm going to show you the prints, and you can see what you think they are, and then uh, I'll go from there and tell you what uh, what I think they are, and what I what I found, and what I, how I was able to, um, I guess debunk them, and the lady was gracious enough to have me there look at them. Uh, she is a local uh, semi kind of a researcher, I guess you'd say. You know, she she does do research. She has done over the years, um, but she wanted somebody's opinion. And when she posted them in this page, uh, people were people were giving a hard time. And then, like I said, other people were saying, "Yeah, they're they're Bigfoot," and other people was like, "You know, they're they're hoaxes." And 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 frankly, this lady didn't hoax them. Uh, she she wasn't there, or she was she was actually called by another person. And she said, because she wasn't there when they were found. She was called by another person and actually went out and looked at them. And like I said, I was I was tagged and uh, asked to go, go look at them. So I'll tell you here in a few minutes, or after you see the, um, the pictures and stuff, of what I found. What you're seeing here is the video that the lady sent to the, the Pennsylvania page of the footprints that she had been called about. Uh, I did emit her audio. Um, so I'm just doing a voiceover here to show you uh, what, what they found. It is a pretty long trackway. In the video, it does seem like they have a pretty long um, stride, but I will show you later that that really was not the case. As you see at the beginning there, they were kind of uh, thinner, I guess you'd say, or lighter. And as you got further along, they would get thicker and more pronounced. Um, and I, I believe I know why this happened. And as you can see, the mud splatter as well. Here's a close-up of one of the prints. And you can see as the trackway continues. Like I said, that was a video of the when the, when the lady first went and, and had a look at the tracks. Um, she also took some pictures. But also, I did notice that in her video or uh, in any of the pictures, uh, there was no surrounding area shown. So that's when my friend went down and I had him take some pictures and videotape or video the area a little bit more in detail. And after viewing his video, I was pretty certain I knew where the mud came from. And I believe it was from a small pond 
like a cattle pond just over the fence. And after talking to the lady uh, about the prints, she did claim that there, or did show me where something had crossed the fence and there was mud on the fence. I did take pictures of that as well. I did uh, investigate that, how that might have happened. Uh, but here's a video of me finding, or actually looking at the pond. Okay, I've determined that most likely the mud that these tracks are made from came from that spot right there. I tried to get down there closer, got down here a little ways, but that big fella didn't, wasn't having it. Uh, there is a couple interesting marks in it. I, I'm not sure if maybe somebody somehow got a vehicle, like a four-wheeler maybe in there. I can't tell for sure if that's what they are. But I'm gonna say that's where the mud come from. I can't find any exit point on this side. So I'm assuming it was on the far side where whoever was in the mud came out of the mud. And like I said, because of him, I can't get there. And I'm, I'm my hypothesis is the reason they don't, it was the footprints and those shoes is most likely they've lost their shoes in that pond. I'm not thinking these are Bigfoot related. I don't really, I don't really believe so. I believe they're human. So let's go down here and look at the fence and I'll show you some stuff there that I, that I believe is what happened. As you can see, the fence is pushed down here. There are a couple impressions along the fence. And if you look, there is mud on that stick. So one is just like the toe, the, from the ball, uh, the foot to the toes possibly, and that was like a, a larger one. I believe that's how they stood. Then come, when leaned on the fence, Went across the fence, kicked their leg over, and that's where the mud come from on there, plus the mud on the fence. It's not impossible to do, even though it looks like it's a pretty tall fence. I recreated it, and I was actually able to do it. Well, after recreating the, the scenario of how somebody crossed the fence and how the mud got on the fence, I then proceeded to look at the footprints. And this will be a video of me showing you the footprints of how or how they were lighter at the beginning and did progressively get darker. And I will tell you my theory on that after this. And here, the footprints are close together. One, they're even shorter than my stride. Up to about this point here, then they get longer and more defined. I believe this is where the individual started running. I'm still able to match them. I have to step pretty hard, but if I, when I tried running, I was able to match them exactly. They lead all the way down through here. to this other road, at which point they make a right-hand turn here. They go on up to about where you see that mailbox. And they kind of cross over the road and disappear. I don't know if they go in the yard or they finally run out of mud but uh yeah i'm still looking to see what we can find hopefully that bull will move off and uh i can get down there and look a little closer well as you can see from that video the footprints that came from the grass were lighter uh, not not quite as pronounced um they were closer together i was easily able to match those the stride they were actually uh, actually closer than my stride 
uh, but they did get bolder. Uh, the mud did get thicker as they went along, and they got further apart. I believe this happened when some, whenever this individual, I believe it was a person, nothing else than a person, began to run in sock feet, most likely with pants on. And the reason I say there's sock feet is that I think the mud from the pants and the socks begin to work down and it was able to make the print look more defined, uh, more th the mud thicker. Also, if you look at some of the prints, you can see where there's a ridge. I believe that's from the pant leg. And you see splatter between some of the, the footprints, especially in the, the ladies' video. I believe that is from the pant leg as well as the feet were kicking forward. Okay, at first my friend didn't take it seriously that I believed that this person was wearing socks. So I wanted to do a small uh, experiment on my own or to prove it. Um, so what I did, I took my shoes off, uh, dumped water on the ground, uh, got my feet wet and proceeded to match the stride of these footprints. And that was what you will see now. <laughs> you already talked to him. Not that guy. I didn't talk to him, I talked to his mother, or grandmother. That old lady. It still doesn't have that thickness to the back. Yeah, it depends on how long, depends on if their hands were soaked in mud. Okay, as you can see, I can match the stride uh, almost exactly. Um, then I also took pictures of the uh, prints that I made and to me, they are almost an exact match. And here are some of the pictures. As you can see, there was detail. Uh, you can actually see my footprint. Uh, my friend was actually surprised that that, was, that that happened. He didn't believe that you could see that much detail with, with me having socks on. Um, this was my second attempt at the experiment. The first experiment, or first time, the, the detail was much pronounced, uh, more pronounced, I mean. And I think it might have took away from it on the second one because my feet were much wetter. Um, as far as the uh, pant leg splatter, I mean, I didn't have mud all over my pants and the bottom of my pants weren't covered in mud, so you wouldn't see that ridge or the, or the splatter. But we did take and go to another location where there was a sighting a few years ago. She wanted to show me that, uh, but I really wanted to get back and see if that bull was gone in order for me to get to the pond. Uh, thankfully, he was moved off to a different area and I was able to get to the pond. And in that video, you can see where the person entered and exited the pond and walked toward the fence. And I'll show you that video now. Okay, you can see where somebody or something was in the pond. There's a print there. It was like a print here or an impression where somebody stepped in it. There, there's two out there that you can't really see very well. You can see where they come out. You see the mud tracks can drain up through here and it leads off that way toward the fence. So for some reason somebody was in that pond. At first I thought maybe there was, they had a like a four-wheeler in there, but I, once I get down here and get closer now, it has to be just some kind of critter. I don't know, maybe a turtle might be in there somewhere. But you can definitely see where somebody was in the pond. There's the other two right there. Or at least what it looks like prints. It almost looks like they. I don't know. Like over here, you can see. I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but. There are footprints right there. Yeah, there's foot. There's. There's footprints right here. At least it looks like footprints. And then it looks like they went over that way and come back out over this way. All right. 
so there we go okay folks i hope that video is kind of i mean i've, I've tried to piece it together i didn't really uh, actually intend to making a video out of that uh, so hopefully you can get some kind of context of what was going on i believe that this was a person i don't know why they were in the pond i, I really can't figure that out i did talk to the uh homeowner that was up and where those uh, tracks actually dissipated and they said they didn't see anyone but yeah i don't know why anybody was in the pond but i believe it's human for sure i don't believe it was Bigfoot. I don't believe it was a juvenile Bigfoot, like some were saying. And I don't believe it was a hoax. I believe just somebody was in his pond for some reason. Or at least I don't believe it was a hoax from the lady that was called. And I don't believe the lady that actually called her hoaxed these videos, or footprints. I just believe somebody was in that pond for some reason. And to those that were saying that she hoaxed them, or they were juvenile Bigfoot, or they... I mean, I even seen a comment saying that they were, uh, somebody must have been carrying a bucket of mud. You know, I th you really should refrain from doing that. Uh, um, if you're not there to look at them, or if you're not able to go uh, investigate them and look at what is going on and what the surroundings are offering to maybe cause this, you know, don't make rude comments. I, from from the beginning pretty much knew that these were human and i pretty much had my feelings that they were they were somebody in in, in socks uh, i mean others didn't but i pretty much did um and i wanted to go because i wanted to not necessarily prove that i was right but to defend this lady she she didn't know for sure she just all she was asking uh, was a question what did people think and there was several people that were kind of rude with her, and I really don't, I really don't think they should have been. So with that being said, thank you for for uh, watching the video. Thank you for uh, to Harriet for as, uh, actually looking for information about things like this. Uh, keep doing that. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you're doing a great service for your area, which is I forgot to mention this is in uh, actually outside of Kaiser, West Virginia. It wasn't in Pennsylvania, but she did post this in a Pennsylvania page. And like I said, the, the owner of that uh, Pennsylvania page is a friend of mine, and she asked me uh, what I thought about them. And I decided I wanted to go check them out and set the uh, record straight, I guess. So with that being said, again, thanks everybody for coming. I will see you on the next one. And until then, on to the next adventure. Bye.